Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video. This time it is going to be an updated Dragoonity deck profile for the current format, post-Phantom Rage. It's more post-Rise of the Duelist, because that actually gave us new cards to play in the deck, and didn't just change the philosophy behind the combos like Phantom Rage did. But, I was too tied up during that time period with new cards being revealed in Japan, and just doing stuff with those. And so I wanted to mess with those, didn't really care about doing anything with Dragoonity in the context of a current format, especially since there is no organized play, or at least on a wide scope. But what I've got for you today is a updated Dragoonity deck list for the current format because we do know when we're getting the new cards. This doesn't include the new cards. The Dragoonity structure deck is canceled. It's not coming out to us in the TCG. All of the cards are getting rarity bumped to, at minimum, ultra rare in the new set Ghost from the Past that comes out March 26th, 2021. So we know when we're getting the Dragoonity cards so we can build up towards that date. But in the meantime, since we now have that date set in stone that we can go toward, we can start looking at the deck from the context of the current format. So what I've got for you today is, like I said, updated deck list for the current format because the philosophies of the deck did change and the deck got some new toys in Rise of the Duelist. Phantom Rage introduced Alpha the Master of Beasts, that is a card that we had to completely, like, to almost, I would consider an erroneous degree, like, completely incorrect degree of focus is what I think I'm putting on that card, but at the same time, I think it's, like, the most, like, hyped side deck card out of Phantom Rage, so I kind of got to respect it and completely, like, alter the ideology of what my ending boards need to be, both in current format and in future, to accommodate for that card existing. But, so what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna show you this deck uh, list. I am actually like filming on my phone, my brand new phone, uh, that I am very excited to see how the camera actually uh, like captures on in terms of an actual like lengthy video. So hopefully you actually are seeing this video because if you don't see this video, that means that it was a failure and I didn't get to use the footage. But, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this deck list and then I'm also going to show you the new combo going through the fundamentals of what has changed about the deck in terms of how you combo with it in current format and, you know, just go over those things. But so, without further ado, let us get into it. I tend to ramble on way too long and videos get too long and I don't want to upload them, so sorry if that ends up being the case again. Anyway, deck list. Three copies of Dragoonity Sinidus. This card is a fantastic starter card. It sucks that it locks you into dragons, but it's ravine and ducks in one card, so you have to take some of the bad with the good. Uh, and then one copy of Dragoonity Ducks. I've actually really liked playing this card in the new support deck, and that's sort of funneled into this deck as well. Uh, this deck is basically built around trying to make as many hands playable as possible because of the fact that so many of the cards do the same thing or serve the same function or serve the same role. Now, I would like to be able to play four Garudas, because the cards that this synergizes with are the same cards that Garuda synergizes with, but Garuda synergizes with them in a superior way, because Garuda is inherently an extender on its own. But I can't play four Garudas, because this is not Magic the Gathering. So, playing a copy of Ducks is actually pretty good. And it also, it has another little niche where some of your hands are like Ravine plus a Tuner plus three cards, and of those three cards, you don't really want to discard any of them because they don't get value. You don't want to, like, discard a card that could be an extender to get Sinidus to your hand so that you can use Sinidus with that Tuner to combo and then have your other extenders that are in the two remaining cards. You would rather actually go Ravine, discard Tuner, add Ducks, and then you can still full combo. There's functionally no difference between Sinidus and Ducks in these combos because we aren't going down glow paths. Uh, so, like, being able to discard a Tuner, add Ducks, you course correct through Needle Fiber because Ducks doesn't lock you out of Needle Fiber, or excuse me. Haka Fibrax. Um, you get to the exact same place mid-combo, regardless of which one you start with, but Sinidus is just inherently stronger because it's a built-in starter card. Ducks requires Ravine or some other thing to be used, so that's why I don't really favor it, but it is my preferred of the two to go for, honestly. But for Wing Beast Extenders, one copy of Zephyros because it's accessed in the combo, you don't need to draw it, and then three copies of Garuda the Wind Spirit. This card is fantastic because it has a lot of overlap with cards that we're already playing in terms of synergy. Uh, the deck is built around trying to resolve Dark Worm as much as possible because Dark Worm is a very, very good extender. It's the best extender in our deck, bar one now, being Revolution Dragon because that card is Dark Worm with extra effects, effectively. Uh, but so, Garuda works with Ravine, Dragon Shrine, Foolish. All these cards we're already playing to try and, you know, synergize with Dark Worm really well to get good value. But it's also like a starter card. It functions the same way Ducks does, because you can go Dragon Shrine, Send Tempest, 
or Foolish Sin Tempest or Ravine Sin Tempest, banish it for Garuda, search a tuner, normal summon the tuner, and that's a ducks like interaction. Like I said, it's in it's superior to ducks in almost every way, except for like one small niche interaction, but I can't play four of it, so I have to play the ducks to get the extra utility. But so Dragon Tuners, three copies of Phalanx, and two copies of Koos. Koos isn't really that valuable outside of making Barka uh, in this version of the deck because we do not have uh, we don't have access to a Reed Bear. Uh, we don't get to make a card with Koos that locks us into Dragoody Synchros when we use it. We don't have a card that is a hard negate that we're going to be putting on our ending board. We're only using it for Link Climbing and then not much else. Whereas Phalanx is a card that we need to have to make Crystal Wing or Borlood Savage Dragon because it's a generic tuner and not something that locks us to Tragunities. So that's why we play three of it, even though Koos is on paper more versatile because it allows itself to level mod into the different uh, synchros. Uh, you need Phalanx because it doesn't restrict you. But carrying on, two copies of Miss Valley Baby Rock. This card is very good uh, because of Revolution Dragon to be playing at multiples. I think three is a bit too much. Uh, it's okay to draw, but it's still not the greatest. It's still kind of a pretty bad extender until we get Glow. When we get Glow, this card's one of the better extenders because you only have to make Gaydurg. But in the context of this deck, you have to be able to make a Tum as your first like extra deck, like big push. Whereas with Glow, with the new support, we're going Gaydurg into Romulus, into you know the rest of our plays. With this deck, you have to go Gaydurg into a Tum into Romulus. So, like, this doesn't really help you get there that efficiently unless we were to, like, squeeze our extra deck dry, fitting something like Coral Dragon into it. Uh, but this card is really good with Odd-Eyes Revolution Dragon being legal because Revolution Dragon can revive Gaydurg, uh, meaning that it becomes a superior extender because Gaydurg can then add and discard one of these so that Odd-Eyes Revolution Dragon was effectively two cards. Uh, instead of just reviving one. So it's pretty good. So like it's it's like mandatory to play one uh, But I just am preferring to play two right now because the card I'd be replacing it with would be like the third coos, which is Decidedly less impactful in this uh, version of the deck with the contextual nature of how this deck needs to function One copy of Dragoonie Arm of Mistleton. This card is just here to search off Tempest It sucks without glow, but sometimes you need to get this level 6 extender uh, Depending on how your uh, hand is structured so it's just like, it's a card that you sometimes have to get off Tempest. Tempest, you're obviously playing this card. This card synergizes with so much. Uh, we're using Garuda with Dragon Shrine for it. We're playing Gold Sark, obviously. Um, I just wish it was at multiples. Konami's kind of scared of this card and they don't really need to be. Uh, this card sucks, but hopefully this card's at like multiples by the time this deck gets its support. Uh, Konami's just scared of the Dragon Rulers in general, but like you could easily move Tempest to two or three and it would do nothing. It would change nothing in the format. It would make this deck just a tiny bit better overall. But anyway, one copy of Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. Even though this card is eroded, we are still playing it in this version of the deck over a card like Dragoonity Armor Leviton for a very specific reason. For our combos to have good value, we have to summon Gaydurg three times over the entire course of the combo. That is impossible to do if we are playing Leviton instead of Darkness Metal because we do not have Glow. Uh, in the new support version of the combo, you're going... Hard Summon Gaydurg, Synchro Summon, your Glow Special Summoning the Gaydurg from your Spell and Trap Zone when it's equipped to Mistleton, and then you're summoning it off Pisty for the third use of the effect. In this version of the combo, we don't have access to that, so we have to make Red Med off of a Tum, pop out of our deck, and then revive the Gaydurg. Uh, so it makes the combo self-contained. So even though those cards are rotted to be significantly worse than it once was, and Leviton outshines it in every way, once we get the new support, and even somewhat now, it's required to play this in order to uh, fulfill the combos requirements and prerequisites, so we have to play it. But anyway, the new card that we get to play, the big boy himself, Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon. We knew what this card was before we knew what Link Monsters were, and now like four years later we finally got it imported to us. I'm super excited for this card, this card is fantastic. In my mind, this card is a mandatory three of in this deck. This card is Dark Worm, but with extra effects. This card's monster effect that you care about is you can pay 500 life, discard this card, and add a level 8 or lower dragon pendulum monster from your deck to your hand. So it searches Dark Worm, searches Lechery if you need it to, and sort of uh, like that other stuff. It's an obscenely high scale, which does matter in some instances of play. And its scale effect is you can target a dragon, uh, fusion, synchro, or exceeds monster in your graveyard. Uh, destroy this card out of your scale and then special summon that card. So it revives like your Gaydurgs for combo uh, like fulfillment. Revives Crystal Wing for like good grind games, Ascalon for like more blowouts. Uh, like it just does, it does a lot. Uh, and because this card exists, it means that we have a lot of cards that access Dark Worm in this deck. Uh, we have an obscene amount of cards that access 
the Dark Worms and get us to Dark Worm and Gate Zero. To the point where we can now like reliably factor in having this card in every single combo that we build our deck around. Because we've got Triple Dragon Shrine, Foolish, the Dark Worms themselves, Ravine can send Dark Worm, uh, and then Revolution Dragon can either be Dark Worm when your hand wants it to be Dark Worm, or it's just Monster Reborn for the best card in our extra deck that is our best combo piece, Gaydurg, when it doesn't need to be Dark Worm. Um, its scale effect is also not a hard once per turn, so like it's kind of ridiculous in that regard. Uh, it just is real good. Definitely a mandatory three of in my head. Uh, but last two like monster monsters of the deck are Goliath Lechery. This is the main purpose of the deck. This is what we're comboing into. You're comboing into two negates, a Spheres Bounce, Goliath Lechery on the board. Uh, so you lock your opponent out of two mechanics, being activating spells and summoning from the extra deck, and then you have a Bounce and two negates complementing it, and a big beefy board. So it's like, it's just trying to set up an auto win effectively, trying to set up one of the, like the strongest boards you can make in Yu-Gi-Oh, which is negating entire mechanics from the game. But for the last, like, monsters in the deck, uh, I just wanted to play a playset of Hand Traps, um, just to make the deck a little bit better on, like, a, like, competitive or semi-competitive or even, like, casual competitive scene. I didn't want to play Nibiru or Imperm, I'd rather play something that's a tuner, because you can, like, Dark Worm plus this into Needle Fiber and try to correct some form of play, uh, if your hand is, like, terrible. And Ash is just, like, the most strictly okay Hand Trap across the board, uh, for me. Uh, whereas, like, Nibiru, like, I mean, yeah, cool, that card's good, and Imperm is also obviously good. Uh, Ash is, like, worse than those in terms of how impactful it is. But across the board, the card is, like, just okay enough to play. Uh, you could probably add more hand traps to this deck uh, to make it a little bit better uh, on, like, again, like a casual competitive scene. Like, if your Locals is open or something. This is a 43-card deck, so those Ash Blossoms are quite literally the 41st th uh, through 3rd card. Um... And because this deck has so many cards in it that do the same thing as one another and facilitate like functioning the same role, you could just up this deck count up to like 45, 6, or even, I would even take it as far up as 50, uh, and you're able to like make the deck still function well uh, with like just because every card in this deck that's an engine card does the exact same thing or accesses a card that does the same thing as anything else. But anyway, for spells, three copies of Ravine, one copy of Terraforming. A uh, copy of Set Rotation and a copy of Magical Midbreaker Field. The field spell that you play uh, doesn't have to be one that can't be activated because uh, you're locking your opponent out of spells anyway if your combo resolves. So just playing a field spell that like does something for you if you need it to is neat. Uh, if you open Set Rotation, uh, you could potentially look at your hand and say, I don't need Ravine to combo with this hand. Standby Phase Set Rotation and like Set Magical Midbreaker to your field. Give your opponent the Ravine and then flip Magical Midbreaker Field when you enter Main Phase 1 uh, and then combo with some inherent better protection against uh, your opponent's potential stuff, like because it yeah, can't target or destroy, so they can't ogre, veiler, or imperm you. Uh, so that's pretty cool. For just like extending cards, uh, slash starter cards, three copies of Dragon Shrine, one copy of Foolish. Uh, we're just trying to get the Dark Worm or Tempest to uh, like synergize with Garuda or a Tuner to send to synergize with Ducks, any of that sort of stuff. We're just trying to get to these cards because they are the best cards in our deck, and they this card works with the best cards in our deck, which is our high-quality extenders, being Dark Worm and synergizing with Garuda. So, it just works out pretty well. Trying to make the deck do the same thing every single time. But then, for the last cards in the deck, one Monster Reborn, because it's just a generic good extender, Gold Sark for Tempest, obviously, one copy of Dragoonie Divine Lance, which is your go-to add off of Romulus, uh, you don't want to draw it, so just play one of it. If you draw it, then it's fine. Romulus just adds Ravine, but, like, you really don't want to draw this card. You want to be able to search it off Romulus. And then the last card in the deck is one called By the Grave. Now, for the extra deck, uh, it's pretty standard. Like, you just need all these cards to combo. One copy of Dragoonity Gaiderg, one copy of Lewin, one, uh, two copies of Barka. Uh, this card is Soul Charge from your extra deck. Uh, you use one in every combo, and then some combos use two. Uh, so, like, there's no real point in playing less than two. I mean, you could possibly cut one, but, I mean, this deck, this deck is meant to fulfill a role. Uh, one copy of Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, one copy of Warlord Savage Dragon. These are the cards you're ending on every single turn one, if you can help it. One copy of Dragoonian Eye Ascalon. This card is a very good, just, like, board clearing, like, game ending card, so that's why it's in the deck. One, uh, Dra uh not Dragoonian. I wish it was Dragoonian named. That would be insane. Hieratic Dragon King of a Tum. This card is fantastic, because it just, you know, is a combo card that gets you to your red med. 
uh, which gets you further into your deck. This card's been insane for this deck since 2012. I don't think I need to explain it. For links, one Pisty, one LP, one Hieratic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres. You're ending on this a lot. One copy of Dragoonie Knight Romulus, one Crystron Halk Fibrax. This is the only non dragon in the extra deck. You use it during the weird Garuda acting like ducks or just straight up ducks combos. You do it to equalize the number of tuners you have in play. And then the last two links are Triple Burst Dragon and Darkness Metal, the Dragon of Dark Steel. This card is a card that functions as an extender if you need it to. Uh, this card could be Saryuja if you wanted to play Saryuja instead, but this card comes up sometimes. Uh, most of the times you're not trying to end on this because it directly conflicts with Hieratic Seal. And like you're trying to end on Hieratic Seal every time because that actually like is an interaction. Uh, and Hieratic Seal and Darkness Metal directly lock you out of each other because this needs to be in the EMZ to do anything and then prevents you from summoning Link Monsters for the rest of the turn when you use its effect. And Hieratic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres needs to be in the Extra Monster Zone to have the bounce effect. So like you can't have both of them in the Extra Monster Zone at the same time, right? Uh, and like you can't make this use as an extender and then link it away into spheres because you're locked out of link summoning and you can't summon spheres and then summon this below it uh, Because this won't have an arrow to summon things back to so with that that is the deck list uh, Let me clean this up and show you a combo real quick as quick as I possibly can because this video is uh, Getting lengthy again. Oh boy all right, so for this combo, I'm going to show you one of the basic, like, fundamentals of how this deck has changed the way that it combos. I'm not going to show you, like, any of the extravagant things. I will discuss some key points. Uh, but basically, like, this is very cookie cutter in terms of how this deck is meant to function, but this is the way that the combo is meant to go. Basically, this combo is very efficient, so, like, if you get to it in different forms, you can actually do it, you know, multiple different ways in this deck. So that's all, uh, that's all fine and good. Basically, three card combo, you need a way to have a play, like Ducks equipping a tuner or Sinidus with a tuner. You need to have access to Dark Worm. That's basically it. It could be Sinidus, Tuner, Dark Worm, all that sort of stuff. Um, like, you just need to have a way to summon Dark Worm, get your scale uh, zero uh, effect, uh, like, add it to your hand, and then you have to be able to combo outside of that with either Sinidus Tuner or Ducks equipping tuner or whatever. Right? It's very simple. Now, your hand could have, like, other, like cards in it like obviously you're gonna have two other cards you could have like gold sark as an extender here uh call by the grave is obviously good for retention but like basically like you just have two blanks in your hand it's a three card combo you don't require any of the cards to discard or do anything that like that with but so this you're gonna use Otto's revolution dragon here pay 500 add dark worm to hand because we do have the dragon ravine in this uh instance of what i'm showing you you're gonna activate the ravine use ravine discard dark worm and add dragoonity phalanx from our deck to our hand or either of the tuners doesn't really matter uh, I'm going to specifically be showing you to how to do this combo with one Phalanx in circulation because that's all you need. Even though you're going to be making two Synchros that require you to use a uh, tuner that's not Koos for it, and we are going to have three tuners in circulation that are Dragoonity tuners by the end of it, uh, you only need one Phalanx to do this combo because of the way that it is structured. But anyway, with no monsters on the board, we get a special the Dark Worm, and then Dark Worm gets to add Supreme King Gate Zero from our deck to our hand. And this combo exists specifically because we get to, like, use our combos in a light of always having access to Dark Worm. We have so many cards in this deck that get you access to Dark Worm. Over a quarter of the deck is access to Dark Worm. So like getting access to it and using its strengths as a pendulum monster to benefit the combo very, very heavily is good. But so from here we get to normal summon Sinidus and we get to use Sinidus discarding Phalanx to equip a different tuner from deck to it. Uh, it could be a Phalanx. In this instance, I'm doing Koos specifically to show you that you only need one Phalanx in circulation. But so, you'll special the Coos here, you'll sync with the Dark Worm and the Coos into Dragoon Knight Luin. Dark Worm goes to our extra deck because it's a Pendulum monster, and then Luin will equip a Coos on Summon. Then we'll special the Coos, Synchro with Sinidus and Coos into Dragoon Knight Gaiderg, and now here's where the combo fun begins. We get to use Gaiderg's effect here to add and discard, so we'll add Blackwing Zephyrus the Elite from deck to hand, and then we'll discard it. And then we get to overlay these two lovely, lovely level 6 dragons into the best rank 6 in the game, as far as I'm concerned, Atum. Uh, so Atum gets to detach the Gaiderg, and then we get to special summon Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon from our deck. Now Darkness Metal gets to use its effect to bring back Gaiderg, and then we get to use its effect again. Gaiderg for Baby Rock, add, discard, special summon it. Now at this point you have actually an interesting play you can do. If you have another copy of Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon in your hand, or you just have one that you held, if you opened with a different extender or whatever, if you have a copy of Revolution Dragon in your hand, you actually get to sort of play around like hand traps in Nibiru here, 
because you can just like have this board that looks very sort of innocuous doesn't really hasn't really gone anywhere yet um and you can just throw these two cards into a crystal wing uh and then use revolution dragon to revive gator and then add and discard the second baby rock and then continue the combo uh from where you left off uh, so like it's it's kind of neat in that regard. Uh, it gives you a little bit of leeway to play around the beer Not nearly as much as we have when we get the new support cards because you get to do the whole combo uh, After making crystal wing as your fifth summon uh, in that instance But in this instance we got to work with what we have so it's a little bit of something you can mess with uh, Like I said this board doesn't look threatening enough to Nibiru um, if your opponent's like not paying attention to it like you could just get away with that one and that'd be pretty cool but Carrying on into the combo, what we're going to do here is we're going to link the Atom and the Darkness Metal into Dragoonity Knight Romulus. And the Romulus here is going to use its effect to add Dragoonity Divine Lance from our deck to our hand. Now from here, we'll activate the Divine Lance, use Divine Lance to equip... Not that. That's not what's supposed to be there. I messed up my sort! How could I? I forgot the Coos. The second Coos in my deck, I forgot to put it on top. It's not clean anymore. Abandoned ship. Uh, anyway, use uh, the Divine Lance to equip Coos and then special Coos. Now, if you had started with Garuda, just like Banishing Tempest and Normal Summoning a Tuner, or you had just started with the Ducks route, right? This would be where you go into Needle Fiber because Sinidus is the reason we have these two tuners in circulation. Sinidus is the reason we have Phalanx, Coos, and Grave right now. And then we're summoning this second Coos here, this third Dragoonity Tuner. If you started with Ducks or one of the Garuda lines, then you would not have access to the third tuner. So what you would do is you'd go Romulus plus the tuner you summoned off Divine Lance into Halka Fibrax, and then you'd use Halka Fibrax to summon Coos out of your deck. And that's where the uh, play line converges with each other, right? So you get to special this. You get to use Zephyros' effect in Grave, bouncing this baby rock to our hand that's just chilling on the board to special the Zephyros from Grave. And then from here, we get to synchro this Coos, treating it as a four because that's its effect, and the Zephyros into... Dragoonity Knight Barka. Now from here, Barka gets to equip three. So it gets to equip Coos, Coos, Phalanx in this instance from our grave. And now we're going to start stepping up into our ending board. Step one, we're going to special this Phalanx and we're going to synchro the Phalanx and this Gaederg because we need to clear the Gaederg for later anyway into the Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon over here. Now we're going to special summon this Coos here and then we're going to special summon this Coos here. These two zones specifically. Now we're going to link this Coos away into Pisty under the left Romulus arrow. And then since this Barca now has nothing equipped to it, it has no use to us, we're going to link the Romulus or the Halka Fibrax, if you had to go down that route, into the Triple Burst Dragon with your Barca. So that sets up the Guard Dragon Zone, and our Gaederg is in Grave ready to be revived. So we use Pisty's effect to revive the Gaederg. But we're not going to use its effect yet because we have this baby rock in hand that we want to trigger. We need to get to a Boardload Savage Dragon. This Coos doesn't allow us to make Boardload Savage Dragon. So we need to get this Guard Dragon Pisty off the board. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to be a little bit inefficient in our combo because we're going to start throwing cards away. Specifically one card. We're going to throw away Darkness Metal, the Dragon of Dark Steel, Making that with Triple Burst and Pisty. Now, we're only locked out of Link Monsters if we use this guy's effect. We're not going to use its effect at all. We want to end on spheres because we want to respect Alpha, the Master of Beasts, because one Alpha cannot play through this ending board. Whereas if you don't have spheres, one Alpha can play through this entire ending board because Alpha can just attack over Goliath, right? Whereas with spheres and Crystal Wing, Alpha cannot out the board if it's one copy of Alpha, right? But so we're just summoning this just to clear space, and then we're going to use Gatorg's effect to add a Morphage Lechery from deck to hand and then discard the Baby Rock we bounced with Zephyros and then special summon the baby rock here. Now we get to synchro these away into Boarload Savage Dragon, the second part of our ending board, and then Savage Dragon gets to equip the Triple Burst Dragon from Grave and get itself three counters and a rather sizable attack boost. Now, where we are is we're at that point where we get to abuse Dark Worm's capabilities as a Pendulum Monster and what it does for the deck. The fact that we can build the deck and the combos around the guarantee of having Dark Worm live in every hand is really good for how this deck can function. We specifically searched a 5 scale, and we have a 0 scale in Gate 0. We're not going to make this and this into spheres because, I mean, where's the LP, where's the Goliath, right? We need one more monster, but we're not going to get it off this because then we can't make spheres. So we're just going to scale these, and we're going to pendulum the Dark Worm 
out of our extra deck. So we're going to use it as an extender again. Uh, fantastic. I like love the way that this card plays in this deck. It's such a superior card um, to like any other extender you could be playing. And then we have a card that searches it and then it's also Monster Reborn. So like, huh, huh. But so you special the Dark Worm because it's a pendulum from your extra deck. And then you link it away into Guard Dragon LP right here underneath this zone of the Darkness Metal Link. Now, we haven't used this guy's effect yet, so we're not locked out of Link Summoning. So we're going to link these two away into our Hieratic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres. Hieratic Seal and LP both point to this zone. So now we get to go LP effect, Special Summon Goliath, and that is the ending board. So why did I make the combo do this? Because, like I said, I am very heavily respecting Alpha, the Master of Beasts. That card terrifies me. That card out the best part of this board just by existing. Special Alpha, attack over Goliath because it's a 3k beater. And then the Lechery and the Goliath are both turned off. So your opponent can now play spells, can now summon from the extra deck. One Alpha cannot play through this board because one Alpha, like, you can't use its effect because Crystal Wing will just negate it. And if you enter battle phase with one alpha and try to attack the Goliath, then the uh, the, the Hieratic Seal just bounces it. So they can't play through this board with one alpha. Uh, is effectively like the entire purpose of changing the design philosophy of the current format combos to fit this. The new card Dragoonie combos already do this because all those hands are nuts and you're doing a lot with fewer cards. A lot more with fewer cards because you have a Reed Bear here. But this is good enough for this current format. Respecting Alpha, respecting the uh, like Phantom Rage meta as much as I can, all that sort of stuff. But so that's basically it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. This video has gone longer than I wanted it to go on. Yet again, I ramble a lot. I'm so sorry. I just have a lot to say. But anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching the video. If you're new here and want to see more stuff, if you made it this far, let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more stuff. I want to be posting more regularly to the channel now that I've got my life sort of calmed down and in a place where I'm enjoying things and all that sort of jazz. But like I've already said, thank you for watching. Thank you so much for your time and take care. I will see you in the next video.